Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Tokyo Yo. My name is T. Here we are looking at another yo yo that I would say is one of the most hyped, or at least the most sought after in a lot of ways, yo yos from one of the most popular and kind of prestigious companies in the indie yo yo community. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the G Squared Elite 2018. So here we are taking a look at the G Squared Elite 2018. So the shape is this angled V you can see here. It's pretty much a straightforward V design. There's no sense of a real step up there. There's a soft little bump that goes down into the response. Then as you get closer up to the rims here, there's a small little angled cut and then the rims themselves. This is an inner ring bimetal. So the ring is inset here to help with the rim weight. In the cup you have these spikes which are pretty par for the course as far as G Squared goes. These are a little bit smaller than the Ghost. They're kind of similar to like the OC spikes. If you've got one of those, I'm not sure how they compare to the Banshee or other ones like that. And you've also got these engravings. This is the, I think it was like the Star Spangled edition or something like that. This uh, July 4th version. There was a blue one and a red one. On the side, you've got these G squared logo along with the American flag motif. And then on the side, you've got the stars from the flag as well. Then you've got, as I mentioned, the inner ring for the bimetal design here. The material is 6061, aluminum on the body, then the stainless steel rings for the extra rim weight on there. The feel is, this may be an unpopular opinion, but the feel is not very comfortable. I don't like the way this yo-yo feels in the hand. The way this rim here kind of fits into your thumb, as you can see, it's pretty uncomfortable. And just in general, I don't feel like this is one of the most comfortable V-shapes I've ever played with, but we'll kind of get to that in a little bit. The look is pretty striking. It definitely has that premium look to it with the stainless steel ring. And I feel like the engravings here kind of match the ring with the white and then the silver. That being said, I don't really like the engravings, especially like putting flags and stuff on things. So I'm not a big fan at all of that motif, but I will say that the engravings themselves do look very nice and they're very well put on. They're quite clean. So as far as look, there's no problem there. G Squared is run by Jacob Gross, who is an independent yo-yo maker. He does the packing, the shipping, the design, everything about the yo-yo. He does everything, the testing. It all gets done by him. So this is kind of his, you know, his passion project. He does it for the fans, for the community. So it's a really cool company that is just in it to make people happy. So that's a pretty cool thing. So the history of the Elite, this is the 2018 edition. There was a 2017 edition that I believe was a little bit more sloped, a little bit more rounded at the edge. And then the 2018 has this different design, but it's had a lot of different color iterations. This one is the 4th of July special, like I mentioned before. And as far as how I got this yo-yo, this came to me from Brett Cosma, who traded me. I traded him my original edge and my crown, and he sent this to me in return. I feel like I definitely got a better value out of it, but thanks a lot Brett I really appreciate it there would be pretty much no other way I'd be able to get my hands on one of these besides trading with someone so I really appreciate it thanks a lot all right so let's get into how the elite plays so it's very very light on the string this thing is just over 60 grams which is pretty crazy especially for a bimetal usually bimetals are you know like around 62 63 something like that having a little bit more weight making them feel a little bit more like a typical yo-yo but being just light enough that you get a different feel from it but definitely this one feels a lot lighter it's not really like crucible light that is The Crucible is crazy light. That thing is amazing, this little featherweight. But this thing definitely does feel like it's on the lighter end of bimetal. So if that's your thing, you're definitely going to be into that. I am definitely a lover of lighter yo-yos. And it being lighter does help with the rim weight. These rims really assist with the spin time, especially this thing spins forever. I don't know that it's the most stable bimetal I've ever played, but it's definitely not like flopping all around or anything like that. And like I said, the extreme rim weight really helps with that. It's very fast because of the lightness and it's easy to maneuver as well. You're not going to have any problems getting it moving wherever you want it to go. It's, you feel like a sense of accuracy with this thing. Like it's really easy to put it where you want it. And the maneuverability just lets you change direction and change tricks and move through transitions really smoothly. It's got a really nice grind surface as well. I'm not sure if this is like the, whatever it's called, dime bla diamond blasted or whatever it is, but it has an extremely nice surface. It feels super premium. 
extremely long grind you're gonna get on this as well. It's got spikes like I mentioned if you're into playing with spikes doing matador play I'm not really that great at it I can't like catch it on the spike but I can kind of transition from a grind to like a finger spin on the spike stuff like that so that's a lot of fun kind of using it in, in more of like a hub stacky way but yeah I kind of enjoy spike play but these are really really small so you're only gonna want to use these when you've kind of gotten used to using spikes in general. The G squared ghost has really big spikes on it so that's kind of I think a better way to kind of learn how to use them or like a any of the one drop yo-yos that use side effects those use spikes as well and those are bigger and a little bit easier to access so as far as finger spins they're not going to happen on this yo-yo and this is kind of something i don't really like about this yo-yo i mentioned before i don't like the engravings just in terms of the theming but i also they, they're really stand out they're a bit scratchy they feel pretty gross when you finger spin on them Yeah, you see what I mean? Not only that, but I feel like this would finger spin really, really well, especially with the surface, if it wasn't for the engraving. Now, most of the elites don't have engravings, so it was just in my case that I got them, but it really does kind of put me off. I'm one of those people who, I, I like finger spins, I'm sorry. I do think that finger spins are a little bit overdone, and I think it, when yo-yos devote their entire design to finger spins it's a bit unfortunate because you're kind of missing out on other aspects of the yo-yo but i do think finger spins are valuable especially because i like to show off to a lot of different people i'm able to kind of show a wide variety of different people my tricks and i feel like finger spins are like a really quick and dirty way to show people what modern yo-yo can do i don't know it feels like the engravings just don't really add much and absolutely are a detriment to the playability of the yo-yo because they just feel super gross to grind on Maybe the more you play with them, maybe the more they wear down and stuff like that. So it could just be that, that it's, you know, a bit new. I mentioned before in the first section, I mentioned the shape. I do not like the shape very much. I've said a lot in tons of my videos that I'm not a big fan of V-shapes. It kind of takes a really special one to get my attention. And this one is just sharp. It's really angled here. There's no soft smoothing over. It is nice that the bimetal rim is like really nice and flush in here, but this rim is just not comfortable. So you can kind of see here, it kind of goes right into your thumb, or at least mine when I catch it, and my finger up here. And so on just about every catch, this is a very, very uncomfortable yo-yo. That could just be because of the shape of my hands and it could be because I have pretty big hands. Although it is mid-sized, I don't know, there's something that feels a little bit smaller about it. It could just be because it's light. In the hand, it does not feel great because of that kind of shape. And on all but the softest of binds, I find that this kind of comes back with a little bite. It doesn't feel like the greatest yo-yo to catch, unfortunately. And one other thing we need to talk about is the price. So I know this is going to depend on where you are in your life, you know, if you have a job, if you have to save up a lot of money to buy yo-yos, whatever. And it also is a little bit different coming from me because I traded for this yo-yo, so I didn't pay full price for it. But, and that is a lot of money to pay for a yo-yo. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't pay that much money. I'm not saying that it's not worth that to some people. What I'm saying is that I think that that's a very, very high price to set for this. It's not 7068, it's not 7075. And I, I don't feel like it has the most spectacular comfort. I don't feel like it's doing anything too wild and crazy with shape and design. So I think that that's a very high price to pay. I know that this is from G Squared and G Squared is an independent company. Jake does all his own stuff with his own yo-yos. He does the testing, he does all the logistics of everything, the shipping, the packing, everything comes from Jake and it all comes from the heart. So I'm definitely not saying you shouldn't give Jake your money for his yo-yos if you're interested in them. But I will say that knowing what I know now, having played the Elite for a little bit, I wouldn't say it's my favorite bimetal. I know there's some yo-yos like the Anglum Tiss and the Drop Near that are extremely expensive. And I think that is silly to pay $200, $250, $300 for yo-yo. At the end of the day, it's a toy. But I'm also a collector. I collect models sometimes. I've collected other things in the past. So I know that the value that something has is the value that you feel for it, if that makes sense. So if you feel like the value of the Elite is worth it to you, then all by all means, go grab it. I'm just saying that I think that that's a very high price and I feel like you should really consider that before you go for one. Now, that being said, you can't really just go get them on the store. A lot of times they sell out in seconds, which is why I was never able to get one, but I got this on the BST and you could probably find your own on BST as well. It seems like they're, you know, almost every day there's one or two that's up for sale and they tend to float around a little bit. So if you're interested, you're gonna be able to find one. All right, as for the pros and cons of the 2018 Elite, the speed is definitely an advantage of this yo-yo, especially since 
it is a bimetal. You want to take advantage of that heavy rim weight. You want your yo-yo to be able to move. And it's nice that this thing moves so well without being out of control. Definitely, I feel like some yo-yos are just race cars and they race ahead without any regard for the player. This is one that I feel like stays under control almost all the time. I mentioned before it has maneuverability as well that comes along with the lightness and the speed. Grinds are really nice. I love the surface on this thing. Like I said, I don't know if this is one of the diamond blasted ones or, or how this was done, but it feels super premium. It's that sort of matte finish that isn't dry. I guess satiny is the way you would say it. Very nice finish on this. The response is fantastic. I can't believe I didn't mention that before, but it has a really, really good response. And I'm, I think I said this in a recent video. I've feel that response is pretty much my number one thing for yo-yos these days, like just past the shape of it. I feel like the response is so, so good on this. I think this uses the G19 pads, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure that most of the yo-yos that Jacob makes are siliconed by him by hand, but I think in a couple of recent yo-yos, he's been using these G19 pads. If you wanted to swap them out for other pads, you can, but I definitely feel like these are very, very solid, very snappy binds, no snags. Now this is where the pros and the cons are gonna kind of meet. I will say one pro of the engraving is that they are nice. I will say that they are very high quality. They're very clean, very nice looking. On the other hand, I don't like the engravings. That's my first con. So I think the con is that they just get in the way of finger spins. They don't assist with anything really. I don't like the theming of them particularly. It's not that I hate them. It's just that they don't appeal to me at all and as well as that, that they explicitly get in the way of finger spin. So that's definitely something you might want to consider if you're thinking about getting one with engravings on it. Now you can get a lot of the elites without engraving, so that's just up to you to find the one you like. The shape, as I mentioned, I'm not a big fan. The For me, I think the pinnacle of V shapes or one of the best that I've ever played is the Benchmark V. I think that that has a very nice soft edge to it. It's very, very rounded off. It almost doesn't feel like a V. I mean, you can get really nice V shapes. It's just, I feel like this one isn't really my bag. It's uncomfortable. I don't like the way it holds in the hand. As I said, it tends to really dig into the, the grooves in, in between my bones here. And I really don't like that feeling at all. And that also doesn't help with catches either. Like I said, the, all but the softest binds tend to come back with a vengeance. And more than once I've kind of just put this yo-yo down just because it hurt to catch. And the price, it just has to be said. I know people are gonna come at me and say, you know, video game systems are $400. If you wanna buy a PC these days for gaming or movie watching or whatever, those are expensive. I mean, my goodness, the iPhone just came out, the new iPhone, that thing's $1,000, that's ridiculous. You know, when all is said and done, it's a toy and it's something you're gonna get enjoyment out of. So whether or not that kind of money is worth it to you is something that you need to kind of figure out for yourself. But I think this just doesn't do it for me as far as that cost. And like I said, I was really lucky to get this in a trade because there's no other way I would have been able to afford it with the you know shipping price to Japan and all that. Definitely something I'm glad I got to really try out and I was able to get it without paying full price for it. Now, after saying all that, and it sounds like I'm super, super down on it, do I think it's actually a good yo-yo? It's really powerful, it's really long spinning, it's pretty stable, but with you know the price to think about for someone who's going into the market trying to get one, for the shape of it, for the engravings, for the kind of uncomfortable factor of it. Just all these things kind of put together. It's not one that I would really recommend getting at full price. So if you're able to get it for a little bit lower price or you're able to trade for it, I definitely recommend that first. I would say go and try it first, but G squared is so in demand, it's impossible to get your hands on anything unless you are there the second they drop, or like I said, unless you just get one later or you're lucky enough to know somebody who has one. So yeah, that's just the way it is. Anyway, thank you so much for watching today. I hope I didn't lose any subscribers with this video. Remember, it's just my opinion. It's just my dumb feeling about everything. So if you disagree with me, that's totally fine. In fact, if you disagree with me, go ahead and leave it in the comments. I'd love to see what people think about it. If you disagree with me, just make sure you keep it civil. There's no reason for us to insult each other or anything like that. And if you don't like it, you can let me know about that as well. So I really like to know what people think about it because it was definitely one of those really, really super hyped yo-yos for me. And so I'm curious to see how you guys feel about it. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, have a nice day, and sayonara.